What is a historical family secret you discovered? Serious. I'm Vietnamese and I'm named Mac. I always thought it was weird to have basically a Scottish name as an Asian. I had thought it would be more appropriate on a big trucker dude, rather than a little Asian guy. Growing up though, I knew my grandpa always had this real fascination about it. I know my name popped up in some of his memoirs and writing, but didn't know why. He and even named his Wi-Fi password after it. I couldn't read Vietnamese so I never understood the significance of it. As a kid I never bothered asking why. It wasn't until I was about 12 years old that my grandpa sat me down and told me about my name. It was after the Mac Dynasty that ruled Vietnam from around 1530 to 1590. The emperor was eventually overthrown and anyone related to the Mac name was killed. So they changed their last names to Pham and went into hiding. Apparently, we were direct descendants of that emperor. So there you have it. My full name is Mac Sin Famasur. My name literally means Mac becomes Pham, as a memory of my family's heritage. For context, Sin in Vietnamese means to create or birth. I've only told a couple people this since it's not like it matters now or anything. But I guess it's cool to say I'm a descendant of an emperor. I'll hail the rightful king in exile. One of my great-grandmothers was named Rifki. When she immigrated to the United States, her name was probably mistyped and changed to Rifle. So I'm descended from a woman legally named Rifle, technically making me a son of a gun. Someone I'm distantly related to was an accomplished car thief in New York who was arrested early. In WW2, he was offered the choice of prisoner serving in the Merchant Marine, and chose the latter. The small ship he was on disappeared and the legend is that he stole it. I've always known that my dad's side of the family was involved with the Yakuza. Growing up, I remember various uncles that would visit us from Japan. I guess it's not a huge secret, but I was surprised when I learned that my dad's family are actually ethnically Korean. Seems a lot of Korean, Japanese heritage used to be kept secret because of history. One of my aunts sent a letter to Nancy Reagan to get some of her favorite recipes. So now we have a cookbook with some of Nancy Reagan's favorite recipes in it. Wouldn't say I discovered it but I did recently ask my grandmother about some details regarding the conditions in which my family immigrated from Germany shortly after World War II. And she looked at me, dried her hands on her apron, and said in a tone I have never heard from her before, the less you know about that the better. Trust me, I'm too terrified to look into any further at the moment. My mom always gets all weird when we start talking about family history too. I think she knows something. Sounds like your family may have been Nazis. Sherlock fucking Holmes over here. Yeah no shit. That's the same conclusion I jump to. What I'm struggling with is whether I want to find out the specifics. I'm not going to pretend to know what you're facing, but just remember that you are not you ancestors, and their actions are not your own. There's also something to be said about acknowledging horrific history so that it's not forgotten, and its mistakes never repeated. Wishing you the best of luck with this struggle, not dating back super far, but that my grandfather was a pedophile. When I was a kid, like 12, I opened up to my mom about being sexually abused and she told me that he did the same to her. Apparently most of the family knew about it but it was a secret that they brushed off and ignored. Because it was shameful I guess. When he died everyone mourned and praised him for what a good man he was anyway. I'm not victim shaming, but if I knew about pedo in my family, I would not let him near my kids. If I knew about a child molester in the family, then there would not be a child molester in the family anymore. My great-grandmother worked in a brothel, and my grandfather lived there for part of his childhood. My dad told me a while back, and it blew my mind. Sally or Bobby Draper's kid. My great-grandfather on my mother's side was sent to Aquitz and died in Dachau. Family legend says that he was sent there as a political prisoner for attempting to assassinate a Nazi official. 
I've never been able to verify this. As all of the records I can find just show him in Dachau. Nothing about him in Auschwitz. Why was he sent to Auschwitz and then Dachau? Was it normal to transfer prisoners around concentration camps? Pretty sure yes. To prevent any form of cooperation or familiarity to form between the guards' prisoners. We did some family history research that I helped out with. Turns out there's an entirely separate line of cousins that spawned from my great-great-grandfather having an affair. My great-great-great-grandfather's brother was the first president of the Transvaal a big part of South Africa. Not necessarily a secret, but one of my ancestors fought in the bloodiest battles of the Civil War and survived. I'm really proud of High Monsieur. It's probably not as extreme as some of the cases here but our deep dark family secret is that we were actually Irish and not British all along. The context, I'm an Australian but my grandfather was really really pedantic about the fact that we were of British blood. The man was big into genealogy and he'd traced our bloodline back generations tying us all to bastard sons and daughters of British lord and ladies and a great businessman who'd traveled to the great land down under to seek fame and fortune. And he also looked down on my dad's side of the family for being an interbred mess consisting of every improper part of the UK. This is a guy who probably thought Lovecraft's reaction to finding out his part Welsh is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Well when he died we went through his genealogy notes and it turned out most of that was a lie. The only source of British blood in that entire side of the family was from his wife. Turns out he's as Irish as a case of Guinness. I mean we obviously knew that there was Irish blood somewhere in the family tree because the Almost stereotypically Irish family name had to have come from somewhere but he said that that was from a single Irish lord who'd been married in some of the unlawful occupy. Wonderful residents of Northern Ireland consider themselves to be British. Perhaps he felt the same. My mom's youngest brother was born from an affair. Back in 60s Korea, a woman holding a baby showed up at my mom's home and asked for her mom. Monsieur the woman confessed that she had an affair with her husband and the baby was the result. My mom was told to take the baby for fresh air while the adults talked things over. My mom being an excited girl with no idea of the gravity of the situation or any sex ed walked around town showing off her cute baby brother outing the humiliation before the family could even process what happened. Her mom was not pleased. They still don't talk, and I believe the brother never learned his true heritage. My great-grandmother on my mother's side practiced witchcraft and sorcery for years as a young adult. How did I find this out? On her deathbed she went from being normal to absolute terrified because the demons are circling around on the ceiling for me. That's crazy. She wasn't schizophrenic or something? I believe it. My grandfather was stitched out the family company by his wife's nephew. I'll call the nephew Simon for ease. Simon was a pretty Machiavellian. Unkind guy. Grandpa was blind and Simon always switched the lights off in his office. Mock him behind his back. Literally. Right behind him. Sneak up to him and shout poof. Mean stuff like that. Anyone. One day he smugly tells my grandfather he's going to give him this amazing pension. The obvious ruse was that my grandfather was becoming increasingly sick diabetes. Heart disease. Stroke. Glaucoma. At all and that he was very old and very ill and would presumably die in a few years. It was a twisted ploy. And my grandfather knew it. Anyway. My grandfather takes the pension and Simon is super pleased and smug-like. But, props to the old guy. My grandpa ended up living to see the millennium. Little old me being born. And a few more years after that. From what my dad tells me. It was around 20 years. Which is 20 years longer than Simon had planned. One day my dad came home with a bottle of champagne. Was very smiley. Asked him what is up big promotion at work? Lottery win. He told me he'd found out Simon had lost everything. His wife. His house. 
and was living in a caravan. Always thought that was a bit mean-spirited of him, but found the company documents in a lockbox years later and realized how deeply Simon had tried to shaft my dad's dad. I don't get how Simon tried to shaft him. Simon offers the dude a lot of money and pension to step down thinking that he'll die off in a few years, leaving Simon the business and money. Old dude lives for another 20 years, which bankrupts Simon. In essence, karma is a bitch. That was what I gathered. My great-grandfather was a doctor that gotten my great-grandmother pregnant and then dumped fired her and left her to fend for herself. If I knew where he was buried I would go to piss on his grave. Apparently we had a baby-killing nurse on my mother's side way back. We don't know much about it, but I'd love to research it if I knew where to start. It was in a little fisher village in Sweden. My ancestors from Ireland were horse the Ives and when they got caught there were deported. This probably happened about early 1900s don't know exactly when but I do know it happened in it wasn't too long ago. They went to the UK and when they heard they could leave Europe they did. They came to Canada. Hey, you, you're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border. Right, walked right into that imperial ambush. Same as us. And that, thief over there. My grand grandfather on one side of the family was the brother-in-law from Joseph Mangley. Not proud of it, but definitely memorable. That's not cool, but really cool at the same time. Well, I learned that my dad's family ran an underground railroad station in Ohio helping escaped slaves flee to Canada. Not a secret, but pretty cool nonetheless. One of my mom's distant cousins was murdered by a drifter. Didn't know about it till a year or two ago. Blew my mind and made me quite sad at same time. One of my ancestors was a Confederate captain. He apparently abandoned his troops and fled to his farm in central Virginia. Crozet. There he found his wife had allowed Union troops to occupy the home. For her making accommodations, the Union army allowed him to return to his home and was not taken as a pal. My father, 82, born in Kansas, was wet nursed by Kaiser Wilhelm my eyes wet nurse. For his children, she immigrated to the US after World War I. Like so many people, my grandpa used to collect toys and bikes during the holidays to give to orphans in Mexico. After his death, one of those orphans reached out to our family. Turns out a old grandpa had a whole other family on the other side of the border. My family has a Japanese sword from WW2 from my great-grandfather. He wasn't the owner of the sword. I decay where he got it but I've heard that he was like a part of the gorilla or had some sort of connections with them at that time when we were colonized by Japan. I've seen the sword a few times and it's rusty and heavy. Our father doesn't let us pull out the whole blade because it could still harm somebody. My family has Minoan ancestors. A lot of their civilization and history was destroyed when a supervolcano, Santorini, Therma at the time, exploded and washed them away. Barely any traces of them exist the only reason I know about it is because we have one of their traditionally styled cowhide shields. The Santorini eruption happened in the second millennium BC. It's not possible that your family still has an heirloom that old. Are you sure the shield wasn't something someone found a long time ago? Not to say your family history is a lie or anything but I just think it would be really exceptional for a single family to be able to keep an heirloom from approximately 3,500 years ago. Yes, agreed. But what you don't know is that we Minoans were exceptional merchants. However, we were not too keen on fighting anyone. Despite the shield being thousands of years old, it can most definitely stay together for a long time when maintained. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.